CNN's top pollster admitting that our next guest, Mark Mitchell of Rasmussen, is right, which is a, an amazing thing. We always love to hype up our guests, and we, we like it when our guests are right. We tend to be predicting the future on this program quite regularly. Uh, it's mainly, mainly because we pay attention, and we can see pattern recognition. Harry Enton is his name. And Harry Enton gave the liberal viewers of CNN an enema of truth when he said, you know what? All the signs are pointing to Donald Trump's victory. Here we go. 28% of Americans, voters, think the country is going in the right direction, is on the right track. And I want you to put that into a historical perspective for you. Okay, what's the average percentage of the public that thinks that the country is on the right track when the incumbent party loses? It's 25%. That 25% looks an awful bit like, like that 28% up there. It doesn't look anything, anything like this 42% doesn't look anything like this 28%. So the bottom line is very few Americans think the country is on the right track at this particular point. It tracks much more with when the incumbent party loses than with it wins. In fact, I went back through history. There isn't a single time in which 28% of the American public thinks the country is going on the right track in which the incumbent party actually won. They always lose when just 28% of the country believes that the country is on the right track. It is. So Harry Enton goes on in that segment to say all of the signs were there. All of the signs were there for a Donald Trump victory. Don't, don't come for me. Don't come for me when Donald Trump wins. Very interesting on voter registrations here. Let's go. Registration numbers, Harry. Yeah, Republicans have been registering n voters in big, huge numbers. They have been gaining in party registration versus the Democrats in the swing states with party registration. We're talking Arizona. I think it's a five point. They've expanded their lead from five points from where it was back in 2020. How about Nevada? Big Republican registrations there. They like the early vote. How about North Carolina? Big Republican registration gains. How about Pennsylvania? We spoke about it before a few months ago. Big Republican party registration gains versus where, where, from where they were four years ago. So Republicans are putting more Republicans in the electorate. The Democratic number versus the Republican number has shrunk. And so the bottom line is, if Republicans win, come next week, Donald Trump wins, comes next week, the signs all along will have been obvious. We would look at the right direction being very low, Joe Biden's approval rating being very low, and Republicans really registering numbers. You can't say you weren't warned. Again. <laughs> can't say you weren't warned. Can't say you weren't warned on this program, as we have taken, um, gone to great lengths to vet uh, and to bring to you the most knowledgeable pollsters, the most accurate pollsters, and quite frankly, the most, um, well, uh, the most unbiased pollsters who simply live with the data. And there's one man who has been spitting facts and bringing numbers to this program for the better part of, uh, uh, the better part of certainly the last six months. And, uh, he don't miss. We're just a few days out to see exactly uh, what will happen on election night. The great Mark Mitchell, head pollster at Rasmussen, joins the program now. Uh, Mark, Harry Enton on CNN is like, Mark Mitchell was right. Jeez, dude. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll just sit here and sip coffee. We can talk about the weather. <laughs> I mean, like, my job here is done. <laughs> Bro. What's, what's Bro. What's funny is he everyone's like, uh, suddenly my entire feed's like Trump will win the national vote. Trump will oh, yeah. win the popular vote. Oh, yeah, the signs are all I there. Donald Trump's going to win. It must well, be great. I mean, it must. You are you going to take a stroll down the Jersey Shore today? Like, wh like what are you going to do today? I really should. It's nice out. Uh, I still have a couple of state polls to crunch and then I'm going to kick my feet up and take a victory lap for the next four years. Uh, uh, really what's crazy is, I mean, listen, you talked about bias. I have biases. I certainly do. In fact, my bias is I want to see voters get more of what they want, but yeah. you know, I can separate that from my work. The crazy thing about the entire polling industry is they all pretend they're not biased. And then they prove to us with their polls over and over again. They are like these Reuters Ipsos guys that had Harris, uh, had Joe Biden losing to Trump. Trump was up plus one. They got all the way out to Harris plus six. And now they're all the way back with a final call at Harris plus one. And so that's the kind of organization that Harry works with. They're putting out suppression polls right now in the blue wall, this CNN. 
And listen, he could have had me on. He could have said that to his viewers. The signs have not changed. The signs have all been there. They just chose not to tell their viewers. And quite frankly, it must be awful stressful to be a CNN watcher right now and have this uh, cloud of cognitive dissonance settle in just a week left to the election. <laughs> it must be horrible. It's not a service that they're doing to their viewers. No, I saw uh, Kamala Harris plus six CNN poll in Wisconsin yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, dude, that deserves to be thrown in the garbage with like the leftover McDonald's. There's no way that is. Is that real? No, I don't think so. I think what's real is that 2020, everybody was doing that. And now this time around, and maybe I can take a little bit of credit for it, but this time around, <laughs> not everybody is doing it. <laughs> and the ones that are kind of stick out like a sore thumb. Because yes. the real clear politics aggregates in all the swing states, okay, except for maybe Michigan, but I think that's even suppressed a little bit, are all red. That's never happened before. And again, I've said many times, I said it on your show, I think the polls are going to be wrong to the left again, even mine. I think there's a bunch of reasons hmm. that Donald Trump outperforms, not least of which is, you know, you got the furry in chief there. What? When listen, everybody Bro. has made up their mind. Ultimately, what it comes down to is that third candidate, the couch. And this has been one of the battles in the polling industry about the 2020 recalled vote. And we started using it this cycle. I think it was the right move. And what it does is it takes everybody from 2020, asks them who they voted for. A lot of people voted for Biden. A lot of people voted for Trump. And then we weight our sample to make sure it matches who they say they voted for in 2020. What that's going to focus on is the few people who change their mind. Those people are going to not be buried or overwhelmed or left out by a blue panel if you're a mainstream media pollster. What it doesn't pick up is all of the sudden, if a bunch of Democrats just decide not to go to the polls. And I think that's exactly where we're at right now. Hmm. So you think that the, 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 you think that the greatest, and here's your, here's, here's uh, your state polling right here. Uh, you think that the greatest threat right now to Kamala Harris is Democrats saying, I am not motivated. I will not show up. I, listen, I don't have time to track all the early vote returns, but what mm -hmm. I've seen is like suppressed returns in Atlanta, Philadelphia, not turning out. Low propensity voters are the ones coming to the polls for Republicans. Republicans are eating into Democrat blue walls. In fact, you have blue leading states that now have Republican firewalls. I mean, just it, it, it's just crazy. It's exactly the kind of thing you would see if Donald Trump is winning the natural popular vote, which we've been saying for a long time, but even doing better than that. And what the conversation is sort of started to focus on sort of the like left wing cope is, well, yeah, Republicans are turning out. Obviously, it's because Trump told them to. And so what they're just doing is cannibalizing their Election Day vote. <laughs> and I'm here to tell everybody that that is absolutely not what's happening. So, you know, Trump's been doing really good in Nevada right now, getting a lot of Republicans that he normally wouldn't uh, in Democrat heavy areas. But I asked people in Nevada, when are you going to vote? And the people who say in person on election day still go Trump 55% to 42%. Wow. So if Republicans head into election day with a early vote advantage, which I believe they have in Nevada right now, yeah. Um, then it, it that it's it's you're you hit the bricks, right? Like if you're Kamala Harris, like you're you're done. I think so. And and, uh, and this isn't like I'm not cherry picking Nevada. This is a trend we're seeing in every single state. I just did Pennsylvania. Finished it yesterday. It's Trump plus two uh, again. I think he's going to do way better than that. But among people in Pennsylvania who say they're going to vote on election day, also uh, Trump wins by eleven points, fifty four to forty three. Boom. So, so Pennsylvania, there's these rumblings about men showing up in Pennsylvania, and I, I, you, you, you sort of hit that on X. But I want to, you know, maybe unpack that for us. Is that a crisis? Are men not voting? Uh, I mean, like, I, I polls aren't going to be a hundred percent accurate of this because it's not what we're waiting to. But we asked, when do you plan to vote this year? And in Pennsylvania, this sample was taken over the weekend. 25% uh, of men, likely voters in Pennsylvania, say they already voted 28% of women. So women have a little bit of an edge there. Uh, and it's overwhelmingly 65 and older people who say they already voted. Um, but listen, there is, again, a massive amount of gas in the tank. In this poll, uh, roughly 50% of people said that they're going to vote on Election Day. So it's still going to be a big thing. I mean, we do see more early voting, but there's a lot of Republicans out there that have not voted yet. 
And I, you know, tr Trump was really wise to tell them to show up. I think there's a major reason. I was talking to Seth Keschel about this. Think about if Republicans held out till election day, of course, there's there's obviously the issues we all saw in Maricopa uh, magnified across every swing state. But if Republicans weren't early voting, what would the narrative in the news media be right now? It would be look at the stunning and brave wave of Democrat turnout we see across all of the battlegrounds. Yeah. Nobody would talk about how it's down 40, 50 percent from where it was back in 2020. They'd be talking about how Kamala Harris is motivating people to go to the polls. And instead, what we're talking about is Republicans have destroyed the Democrat early vote advantage that they always have. And now it's just Trump dunking on Kamala Harris day after day. And again, I don't think like that's going to change any minds at all. But nobody wants to vote for a loser. They just might not show up. There doesn't seem to be, you know, you go back into the history of campaign reporting and you listen to some of the smartest people that were talking about Jimmy Carter in 1980 and George H.W. Bush in 92. And there's this black cloud of doom that sort of hovers over these campaigns. You know, it's, it's esoteric. You can't really put a number to it. But there's this feel, there's this feeling that this is going to, that, that they are going to lose. And I'm starting to see that, co and now I wasn't around for those two elections. But I'm starting to see that coalesce around Kamala as I read back at the campaign reporters back in those those elections that that there's sort of this 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 per, this this uh, permeating sense of doom that is affecting also the energy on the trail. And even when Kamala Harris does her centrally planned Hollywood produced speech in front of the White House, that gets completely destroyed by Joe Biden calling the country garbage. Yeah. So it's like they just can't win, Mark. It seems like there's there's no W's in the column, which is hard, I mean, it's hard to win an election when there's no W's. The country hates the government, and Kamala Harris is the government candidate. I think that's the trap she's gotten in, herself into. And, of course, she has some downsides that prevent that from happening. You just put the map up, too. I will say I think Wisconsin saved Trump. And I had Virginia at Trump down two and New Hampshire at Trump down one. So those are possible flips. Uh, wow. So anyways, but yeah, you're right about 1980. I was one. And just a couple weeks ago, actually, while I was in the green room coming on your show, I dug this article up and we talked about it a little. But if people haven't read it yet, they should go look it up. Time magazine, John F. Stacks, written December 1st, 1980, where the polls went wrong. It's really worth a read. And it talks about, listen, like everybody thought it was going to be neck and neck. They even use the words too close to call in here. And I think the, po the polling industry self-apologetically came up with this explanation that there was a big bang where everybody in America all of a sudden decided to vote Reagan. That's not what happened at all. The pollsters were lying. I made a tweet a couple of weeks ago, and I think it was spot on. Is this what 1980 would look like if the pollsters back then had the Internet? I really think it is. Mm. So we made some waves on the internet earlier this week with Rich Barris coming on this program and saying, mm. New Hampshire, Virginia, New Mexico, Minnesota, things are looking uh, a little scary. And during the show live, uh, Kamala Harris apparently starts pulling funding from North Carolina and reallocating it to Virginia, which is, of course, if you want to know someone's priorities, look at their checkbook. And um, I guess my question to you, Mark, is, what do you think? I mean, if there was to be something that flips, so it seems like you might not disagree, you might not agree with this current map, which is just the aggregate on Real Clear. But let's say this map tilts Trump, like and swing or swings Trump. What would be the first state to go? Um, right here, I think Wisconsin definitely. I hit Wisconsin up too. I'm polling. I literally still have to process Michigan and Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Michigan's been roughly tied. Last time I went out, uh, I would call that a toss up. But again, I do think my polling is too left. So I think Wisconsin's safe. I think Michigan is a light. And we just polled Virginia. It was Harris up three a month ago. It's Harris up two now. Mm -hmm. And New Hampshire, listen, that's a tough state to poll. But I had Harris only up one point. And I have Trump at a two-point national popular vote win. But like, look at the turnout that's happening across the country in these states. It's It's – really not what I expected based on the numbers that I see. And so I do think, especially like, listen, she's a loser. She wouldn't go on. She wouldn't talk to a human being for two hours. 
to to get an audience of 50 million people Jeez. like imagine if you were a major backer of hers and you donated 100 million dollars it got laundered into her campaign like they can, and they can't even have a two-hour conversation when everybody is expecting it I just, I don't know. I have a hunch. Like, listen, we've talked about the irregularities. And actually, if we have a few minutes, I'd love to get into some polling I have on that. Please. This isn't in the bag yet, but it looks like it's going to be. And you're going to see, I think, maybe a New Hampshire or Virginia pickup. And maybe that'll make Election Day awful short. Uh, I do think so. That would be your guess? guess. That was going to be my follow up, Mark. So your guess would be Virginia or uh, New Hampshire? Because Donald Trump's in um, New Mexico today, I, th I believe. Uh, New Mexico, I had at Harris plus five. So I think Minnesota is better off than New Mexico is. But again, mm -hmm. he's my point is, is he's not spending a ton of money in North Carolina right now. And right there is a really good example. That's a state where they're at least one of the battlegrounds where there's going to be a polling miss because the real clear politics aggregate has Trump up one in North Carolina, but he won it four years ago with 1.5. So listen. When the national popular vote shifts six points to the right, and yet North Carolina shifts a half a point to the left, that doesn't make sense. So uh, we just put out, uh, what was my North Carolina number? I mean, uh, I think it was a Trump plus two or three. I think my polling is still two left. Uh, and we did have a Trump plus three last time we went out. I think um, Trump wins by more than that. I think it's like probably four or five points in North Carolina. And it's like, if that plays out in other states, like Minnesota's going to be like a tie then, right? I mean, New Hampshire, it might be enough to put him over in New Hampshire and Virginia. And I think he's going to be in upper single digits in places like New Jersey, uh, where he's, uh, you know, I showed a massive shift to the right in New Jersey. I still have Harris winning that. But look at the early vote returns. They're incredible. Who thought we'd be talking about that? Yeah. So this seems like a very, very bad map for Kamala Harris. Can you explain, perhaps, should people be concerned about some of the uh, illegal voting that has been caught in Michigan, like foreign students from China voting, that's 100% uh, confirmed. Duplicate names uh, that have been, ha had to be sued in the state of Pennsylvania to be removed. There's hundreds of thousands yeah. of them, along with uh, along with thousands of voter registrations that, has, that have been called out as fraudulent in Luzerne County in Pennsylvania. It does seem like some real shenanigans are up. Yeah, so this is my message to election riggers. This is not 2020 where you can hide behind masks and six foot social distancing and where people are immune to the thought that, that the elections might not be 100 percent circumspect. Uh, I think it was also wise for Trump to push an early vote because more voters out there are more opportunities for people to identify and film these things. And I will say I've been pretty impressed at what seems to be a very rapid response. These things are getting rapid attention or being addressed. That's all very good signs. Here's my, <laughs> here are just some numbers for the election riggers. Hmm. Are there election workers and officials who have enabled election fraud? 49% of US voters say yes, only 27% say no. 62% of Republicans and a plurality of independents, 47% to 26%. How likely is it that officials who have enabled election cheating will be held criminally accountable? 48% say at least somewhat likely, 26% vary, only 14% not at all. Uh, Republicans are a little blackpilled here, and Democrats clearly think that there's more accountability. But mm. here's what I want to say. What should the punishment be for election officials found guilty of cheating in elections? 22% say prohibiting from holding public office. 9% say fines. 19% say prison. You say, wow, those numbers are low. No, oh, all of the above, 43%. So 62% wow. of voters in America want election riggers to go to jail, think it's actually happening in elections. And as we've talked about before, two thirds of voters in this country think it's at least somewhat likely that the outcome of this election is gonna be subjected by fraud. And oh, I forgot to mention, even 2% of the country wants the capital punishment for election riggers. I mean, but, you know, so taking a step back, like by by voting illegally and casting illegal ballots, what you do is you completely. I mean, my thought on this, Mark, is if a single illegal vote goes into the system, then you have rotted the entire batch of apples that that one single illegal vote begin is enough to cause any voter to say, well, hell, you just canceled my vote.
So F you, actually, because you've, you've, you eliminated my legal vote with your one illegal vote. So you just like eliminated me from the democracy that I, that I pay for, right? Like in this country. And so that's what's happened in Michigan. Uh, Secretary of State in Colorado has all the, like the passwords for the electronic voting systems, uh, pu publicly available. It, it, lo it looks like a total mess. I really hope like for the sake of the country, I mean, truly like for the sake of the country that we tighten up the ship here. Um, maybe Congress can do something. I'm not, yeah. I'm not exact, you know, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure of the constitutional barriers here, but it's crazy, man. Um, Virginia having to go to the Supreme Court just to keep only citizens voting in Virginia is nuts. It's nuts. Yeah, I think the government has a sacred duty. We're a, we're a representative democracy. Like people's vote should be sacrosanct. And when you're in a position where two thirds of voters are afraid that cheating is going to affect the outcome of their election, that should be a bipartisan like nuclear bomb that they need to fix that issue immediately. And yes. it's a bigger issue even than the border. Uh, we have 64% of people thinking the border is an invasion, but even more thinking that there's cheating in elections. And of course, wow. if you l listen to any conservative, even leaning mainstream media organization, they're going to say the line that, <laughs> that it's the safest and securest election ever. And that doesn't work. And what is peculiar is that there have been a lot of opportunities for Republican election officials in some of these states to crack down. And of course, they just absolutely have been unwilling to. So there needs to be a shift. I'm hoping, listen, I want voters to, I want their vote to count. I want voters to get what they want. And it looks like the Trump win might have the opportunity to do that. It would really behoove these people, I think, to have a crusade to go after all forms of election fraud because people yes. in general just don't trust the government. And so when they come out and say, no, there's nothing to see here, it doesn't work. Mark, uh, your last polling, uh, we had it up on the screen for just a moment, but uh, but you are wrapping up this polling season. Where is Donald Trump going to end up? And where is your prediction for an election night? I think we'll put up the, the, the Rasmussen uh, graph, please. Yeah, so here's the states. We still have, like I said, Wisconsin and Michigan to put out. Uh, I think that Trump is going to outperform in almost all of these scenarios, except for maybe Georgia. Uh, I think the national popular vote Trump, our numbers are going to say probably Trump plus two. I'm going to crunch the numbers tomorrow and use almost all of our October October data. Uh, polling is not useful anymore. Like 40% of the country has already voted and they're not mm. picking up the phones. Hmm. Uh, I think that Trump will outperform all of my polls. I think we're also going to be talking, even though the polls this time out showed that Trump has a really good chance and is fact winning that he will outperform the polling industry again and people will be licking their wounds. Although I think the positive thing is the list of people who are absolutely the worst with horrible final calls is going to be a lot shorter list this time. Mm. Hmm. Uh, probably because of you, Mark. You know, we're, you know, we're big fans on the show, homie, but you have been the guy out here. Be it kind of takes like one brave person, right? To like, to, to be the first guy through the wall. And, and and you have done it, man. I think you've changed the polling industry. I think you've changed it forever. It used to be an industry of cowards and great sheep herd th brainwashing. And that's just me, like, uh, just observing, yeah. right? I don't even I don't even do that remotely professionally. But, uh, dude, you've, you've, you've come out and you've clobbered them and it's been, been really special to watch. Well, if Harris comes out with a plus five victory, they'll all throw me under the bus immediately. But I do think this chart here is one of the reasons a lot of these people have come back to the right. And listen, we're not out exposed on the far right. We are not the right bookend. We never were in any of the past elections. It's just they cherry pick one or two here or there to slander us. But you have like for, uh, Forbes, Harris X at Trump plus two, CNBC, Trump plus two, Fox News, Trump plus two, Atlas Intel, Trump plus two, and then a lot of other people at Trump plus one and tied. So uh, again, it's like, the consensus seeking part of the polling industry seems to be working again. And we'll just see how much the bias is. And I think it's still going to be a little bit of a bias to the left. Uh, although maybe not the four five, six points we've seen in the last two cycles. Very interesting, Mark. I'm like, I'm I just like, I just can't wait, man. I just can't wait. I want to see it. I want to see it happen. Now I'm like ready right now. Now I, now I am ready. I like, like, you know, let's, Let's do it. Let's throw down. Like I, I'm ready for the fight. But enough pre, enough, enough of the pre, 
enough of the enough of the, I don't know if you see this in, in the studio. We have like the, like a boxing match, like image that's been up on the wall for nice. months, you know, for months. And uh, and I'm, I'm I want the fight. I want the fight, and I want the knockout, and I'm ready for it. Uh, Mark, uh, you you just one of the best dudes. Here's uh, Mark's ex. Get in there and actually follow for legitimate reporting and polling. Fifty. 3,000 Americans can't be wrong. And Mark, I promise you that Vivek and I will head over to the Jersey Shore in our trash truck soon and clean up the mess. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, happy to, happy to have people on my Twitter feed. We like to have fun too. Definitely like to throw mud at trolls. So uh, <laughs> come on out and see you there. All right. Hey, thanks, Howie. See ya. All right. Good talking to you.